I'll show you how to do this one cool technique of gating the reverb. Um, okay, so when you want it to gate or sort of duck the reverb, basically you gotta make sure that there is space between the chords that you want to have the so uh, reverb has time to really come out and shine so here's what the chord progression sounds like before we do anything to it okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new uh, instrument here for the side chain with the same midi and um, I found that the best thing that works for side chaining is just a um, normal ES2 set to a square wave. So we're going to go to tutorial settings, going to go to analog saw init, and set that to a square. Now that sounds pretty bad, so but you don't have to worry about it. Basically, what we're going to do is just route it to um, bus one and um, we're going to make that have no output. Okay, and then we're going to route this to bus 2. Now we're going to go into the arrange window. I'm sorry, excuse me, the mixer window, which can be accessed by going to the window menu or hitting command 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new auxiliary channel strip in stereo. And we're going to have the audio coming into that from bus two. So now what's happening is that the audio from the ES2 signal is going into bus one. And since bus one has no output, you can't hear it. And what's happening is that the audio from here is going into these two channel strips, and one of these channel strips is going to have an instance of a reverb plugin. In this case, we're going to use the Averb plugin in Logic. And I'm going to quickly set that to um, what I like to use for this process. And then I'm going to set a compressor uh, from the dynamics. And I'm going to have that side chain using a preset I built up to the first auxiliary channel, or bus one. So basically, um, we have accomplished the effect. Um, the reason why I'm side chaining to the square wave instead of the sound of the instrument is because um, it's a much smoother block of side chaining. And what we can do is we can tweak the release to make it a little bit more graceful. Now I want to go into this technique a little bit in more detail to discuss how it could be used in a build. So what we can do in Logic is we can fully automate all the channels. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set that to read. So it's reading the automation data that we may or may not write in there. And I'm going to go ahead and set that to read and set that to read. Okay. So we can go ahead and get our automation data out here. So we can go ahead and, um, if we want, we can go ahead and automate the um, release. Oh wait, sorry, wrong one. We can automate the release. Let's see, I just wanna make sure yes, so that we can further enhance the build that way. <laughs> and turn the preset all the way up so it's like this. <laughs> We can 
can go in there and really just go ahead and automate the EQ. Now see, it's great when you're working with pads that have three, four, five, or even six layers to shove them into an auxiliary channel so you can do all the automations really, really easily. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put the high cut at on. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and put the high cut frequency and you know just sort of draw a nice little line here we can either use this tool or we can go ahead go use the pencil tool if you want a more graceful curve but you know i just prefer to have those straight lines <laughs> Of course, it's not really the most refined pad, but you really get the idea. Uh, thanks for joining me. I really hope this helped in any of your further excursions with Logic. Alright, take care and have a pleasant evening. Bye.